A hydrogen-fueled Hyundai Nexo has set a new distance driving record from civilization or its approximate equivalent, Australia, all the way to Dingo Piss Creek. Yes. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously, or just click the car that's up there now, dude. I'm pretty sure it's a breach of the Australian Constitution for any vehicle, which is not a grossly overloaded Hilux dragging a busted ass. Three and a half ton acoustically transparent aluminium shit what? to actually visit Dingo Piss Creek without a visa. So, this is pretty clearly a violation of the rules by Hyundai. For shame. I didn't know where I was going, so I just kept going down the gravel road and we've ended up here. We're miles past where we thought we were going to get. Hey! Even then, the Hilux must be fitted with more than its unmodified mass in, let's call them, compensatory accessories from the corporate welfare cheats at ARB. Otherwise, even the Hilux needs a visa to visit the creek. I'm not accusing ARB of anything illegal here. They're merely unprincipled, welfare-sucking shitheads, in my view. Quick sidebar on this, okay? A COVID-19 bullshit Bulba boom in Australia recently meant a 113% lift in profit in the half year to December just gone for ARB. 54 million smackers in profit. Yes, well done, dudes. But of course, no plans to repay the 9.8 million bucks ARB hoovered up from the taxpayer using JobKeeper. Can you smell that? I know I can. The distinct aroma of unprincipled asshole. Just like in Parliament House. It's everywhere lately. These corporate assholes, they hate government intervention, right? Except, of course, when it's a big fat handout that's, hey, not even means tested. No robo debt up the big end of town, I know. Just fat stacks of free cash. Anywho, where were we? Hyundai conscripted low-key rally ace Brendan Reeves abandoned his Nexo just shy of DPC at a place called LD Station just outside Silverton, which is, of course, where they shot Mad Max 2 all those years ago, the Road Warrior, which is just outside of Broken Hill, birthplace of BHP, which is well and truly outside the range of anything that could be construed as cultured. Like, out there, dude, asking to see the wine list. Generally doesn't end all that well. This is properly brave stuff, therefore. Like, Brendo left a perfectly serviceable capital city, Melbourne, which is arguably Australia's most civilised city, which is kind of like saying the world's best prison dining experience. Anyway, he fucked off and drove an incredible 887.5 kilometres to the east bank of Dingo Piss Creek. <laughs> Near LD Station. Be still, my heart. In doing so, he, and by he, I mean the car, managed to turn 6.27 kilos of hydrogen gas into about 60 litres of water by recombining it with atmospheric oxygen deep inside the bowels of the fuel cell, which is kind of how fuel cells roll in order to make electricity to power the vehicle, in this case, through a cultural void. So quite a severe operating set of constraints there. Brendo's effort averaging a staggering 66.9 kilometres per hour <laughs> for 13 straight hours through the great Australian fuck all, or the gaffer, to which it is colloquially referred by those in the know, eclipses that of a French dude who has a previous record also in an exo of 778 kilometres between two 
unpronounceable wine and foie gras hotspots, you know, up there somewhere. The low speed, of course, is simply to reduce aerodynamic drag and boost cruising range. The car can go faster than that, like, obviously. During the trip, the Nexo consumed a total of 6.27 kilos of hydrogen at a rate of 0.706 kilograms per 100 kilometres. It purified 449,100 litres of air on the journey, enough for 33 adults to breathe in a day. It's plastic exhaust pipe emitting only water throughout the trip. It emitted zero CO2, where a standard internal combustion engine vehicle would have emitted about 126 kilos of CO2 over the same distance. A dude from Hyundai there, personally, I really wouldn't want to be among the 33 adults in a room testing all of that purified air, verifying that hypothesis. It is kind of depleted of oxygen after all, after this process. Like maybe it'd be okay, I just don't want to be that particular lab rat. Call me old fashioned on this. I did ask them about all of this alleged purification because it was starting to smell like ARB's decision not to repay JobKeeper. Perhaps I'm just sensitive to that. But apparently, this is a true and valid claim, like the purification. Nexo does suck atmospheric oxygen gas out of the air and recombines it with the hydrogen to make water, but only after said air passes through some pretty advanced filtration, which takes place in three stages, actually, designed to remove ultrafine PM 2.5s from the air, as well as sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxide gases. And apparently these are retained forevermore and not just kind of pooped out the back en route. So that's nice. The vehicle itself is therefore something of an air purifier confirmed. Officially, the Nexo has a somewhat satanic driving range of 666 kilometres, number of the beast, based on the WLTP cycle, in which you can just game the same as in a hydrocarbon-powered car if you use conventional hypermiling driving techniques, which Brendo did, you know. Pump up the tyres, drive really, really slow and gentle kind of thing. I have had the pleasure, if that's the right word, of driving from Darwin to Adelaide like that twice, and I can confirm it's just like a Valium overdose that never friggin' ends, basically, at least subjectively, that's how it seems. Independent oversight of the test was provided by the RACV, they say, which sealed the tank in what could loosely be described as civilization at Essendon, and the seal integrity was verified against a backdrop of dueling banjos, Creekside, by the NRMA. Yes. Brendo, congratulations. <laughs> yes. Made it. it. Well, the kilometers you ended up with, 887.5. But everyone got out alive, you know, mostly. So look, what this demonstrates is that hydrogen fuel cell vehicles like the Nexo really can literally go the distance. And if there were a refueling station or infrastructure in places like Dingo Piss Creek, like there isn't, but if there were, you could refuel in three to five minutes and then head on home before the locals or the venomous reptiles or melanoma or dehydration or heat stroke gets you. So that's nice. And pro tip, when they open the borders again and you can visit Australia, one way trip, dude, you won't be going home. And this is the fundamental problem with hydrogen, okay? Not the venomous reptiles, etc. in the sun. There's no infrastructure despite Schittsville being the ideal place to roll it all out, okay? Presently, there are three refuelers in Schittsville. Toyota has one in Melbourne, Hyundai has one in Sydney, and the ACT government has one in... <coughs> and the dirty little secret about hydrogen, okay, is that it's really only a clean, defensible solution for transportation if you make it by electrolyzing water using renewable electricity. Normal industrial type hydrogen gas production, it's made by steam reforming methane, which is a ridiculously inefficient but fairly cost-effective process. 
and it also emits like a shit ton of CO2. And this is fine, I suppose, if you need hydrogen gas for an industrial process, like for example, making the glass for flat screen TVs or things of that nature. But it's absurd if you use hydrogen gas for transportation, okay, because of the second law of thermodynamics, which is rather a big hurdle in so many ways. And without boring you with the physics on this, every time you do a process to something, you lose available energy. And therefore, if all you want to do is transport, you'd just be better off burning the methane instead of converting the methane to hydrogen and then oxidizing it inside a friggin' fuel cell. Fewer processes, just burning the methane, right? And therefore, more available energy to exploit. It's kind of how the universe rolls. It's been proven over and over and over again. It's also probably greener, right, from a greenhouse perspective, just to burn the methane. See, if you use industrial-type hydrogen for transport, there's really very little to no greenhouse benefit because of the emissions from making the hydrogen, which comes directly from the methane. You throw the carbon away after you combine it with atmospheric oxygen, if you do it that way. And also the greenhouse emissions indirectly from heating the whole process up. Like, step one of steam reformation does not occur until you get the lot to 1100 degrees C. And that heat's got to come from somewhere. And then you've got to heat it up again to like 300 to finish the job, okay? So that's rather a lot of Bunsen burning, isn't it? And unfortunately, despite having a really big solar array on the roof of its headquarters in Macquarie Park in Sydney, and despite the hydrogen refueler stuck on the tarmac out the back, even Hyundai just trucks in bottles of industrial type hydrogen for their various hydrogen fueled applications. And that means filthy hydrogen for an otherwise clean process. So here's how this could work, okay? If the world were perfect, and I know it's not. Rooftop solar could power an on-site electrolyzer, which could be used to separate water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. And obviously, you collect both gases separately, which is very easy to do. And you could, I don't know, sell the oxygen gas or something and store the hydrogen in a big fat bottle on site at about 12,000 PSI or something. And you just decant it into your fleet of Nexos. Okay, this is all doable. It's off the shelf, it's easy to do, and it's not even all that expensive in the context of the kinds of money that car companies make. In fact, this is how the ACT government's refueler rolls, right? But not even Hyundai, which has tremendous skin in the hydrogen game, as far as I can see, not even Hyundai has been able to justify putting an electrolyzer in place on site yet where, of course, it would be a clean green beacon to businesses and governments alike. Like, they've been talking about doing it for years now, years, which is not the same thing as actually doing it. Like, would it not be a huge plus for them to be able to say, check this out, dudes, clean, green, and totally sustainable. Vehicles and the fuel off the grid forever. Sign here. Like NASA used fuel cells in Apollo, and I first drove a Hyundai fuel cell car, an iX35, in South Korea in 2010. It was an experimental prototype, right? And Nexo is here now, 11 years later. But if Hyundai itself cannot commit to manufacturing the hydrogen on site, off the grid, like, imagine how difficult it must be as an ask for businesses without the same commitment to the underlying technology, okay? And car makers, of course, will tell you that they are not fuel companies, traditionally. Typically, this is because of the inconvenience of owning an oil field in Azerbaijan or something, and you've got to have a refinery and all that shipping because they're grossly different businesses, building cars, making fuel. But hydrogen is somewhat different. It's extremely decentralized and far more accessible, and it does not involve undersea drilling and otherwise millions of dollars in capital investment. And Australia could be a real hydrogen superpower. Hydrogen 
could literally make Australia less shit. A tank of compressed hydrogen made in this way is actually just stored solar energy, basically. Like, it's a way of tapping into photovoltaic or wind energy when the sun's not shining and the wind's not blowing, like overnight or something, right? But water is prolific too, and water's the only input here. You break water up and then you put it back together inside the fuel cell. Sunlight is prolific in Australia, and it's the only energy source on Earth that can match hydrocarbons and what we do with them on a daily basis. But there has to be a working example of this, like come and see it, for people to come and just have a look at like that and go, oh yeah, especially seeing as CEOs and politicians are typically such emphatically dumb shits. I think you'd agree. So, I'd suggest, now that we've got the excursion to Dingo Piss Creek out of our collective system, and hey, well done there, hashtag respect, we've got a record now, but now that we've got that record, I really would like to see Hyundai Shitsville roll out a proper off-grid hydrogen refueler in Sydney and show the politicians and the CEOs just how achievable this actually is, because I put it to you that we proud sons and daughters of friggin' convicts are living in the corner penthouse of Sunlight Central. And hydrogen can do the one thing that batteries cannot, which is be rolled out at scale now. And the company that gets this right will absolutely become the Coca-Cola of hydrogen fuel cell mobility which is a big chunk of the transportation future. Because what are the alternatives, right? There's a very big win at stake here. Certainly one worth a couple of hundred thousand bucks for a pissy little high pressure electrolyzer, especially, I'd suggest, as we are all going to be judged on this by the next generation, and of course, the ones after that. So I ask you, as your next prime mincer, do you think Hyundai can make Australia less shit in this way and take hydrogen refueling off the grid? Divorce us from methane. Like, dude, what are the odds? Let me know if you think they can do it in the comments below.